up and good afternoon guys. Welcome back to another video. Today we're not gonna be working on the F450 project. However, we are gonna be working on a truck project inside the shop here and that would be our mini truck over there. As you guys know, we've been getting this thing ready to go out to the ranch. We built a super sweet custom gooseneck trailer that is almost done. We just gotta wire up all the lighting for it, which should be happening very soon. But we've still got a few things we gotta do to this truck before it is ready to go out to the ranch. And trust me guys, I wanna get both of these out of my shop because well, we are pretty cramped for space in here. So today I decided I am jumping back on the mini truck project and let's finish out some final details on this thing that way it is all nice and ready to go so if you've been following along the last things that we have done is we got our plexiglass window that we made for this thing but we still need to put the glass window the actual factory window that goes on the passenger side back in so we're gonna do that today then more importantly we kind of kind of figure out what we're gonna do with this gooseneck hitch setup here in the bed because obviously this is a dump bed that I do plan on using pretty heavily at the ranch um, for yard clippings, you know, whatever, general maintenance around the property, but the dump bed was a feature that I'm super excited to have. Now, if we have a gooseneck bowl on the way and we go to dump stuff, like this is just gonna fill up with crap, um, or the ball's gonna fill up or something like that. We don't want that. So we have to come up with a cover for this. And then the other thing we gotta do is we gotta figure out the wiring to get the trailer plug put on the mini truck. We actually have the plug here and my original plan was I was gonna make a like a good sized trap door right here that this plug also sits down in. Everything's already pre-wired. I'll lift the bed up in a second and show you guys the pre-wiring that we've done. I don't know how much I'm gonna use the trailer and the trailer lighting to where I want this bigger hole cut in the bed. What I might do, and y'all might get all freaked out about this, but I think what I'm gonna do is I might mount this down here next to the actual bumper pull hitch, and then, and this might be a little bit goofy, but maybe run a wire off the front of the gooseneck here, and then we'll just plug her in. Kind of like a bumper pull trailer. I know it's not the traditional way to plug in a gooseneck trailer, but there ain't a whole lot of traditional about what we do on anything. And I'll have basically double the wiring without having to put another plug in, should we want to hook up a bumper pull trailer to, and have the lights and all that work. It's not ideal, it's not what I originally planned on doing, but I don't think I want to cut a bigger hole here to be able to recess mount this down up underneath the bed somewhere. Now the other thing is, the old mini truck here, <laughs> And I had a feeling this was gonna happen once I uh, got everything all nice and dialed in and built, but the mini truck's been running a little rough lately. Zach thinks we can get away with just changing out some spark plugs. So I think that's what we're gonna try to do today as well is swap out the spark plugs on there and see if that helps it run a little better. It's actually been starting easier. It just seems like it's running a little rougher. Now that I said this thing fires up easier, she probably won't, but let's open up the shop here so we get a little bit of ventilation. Because one thing's for sure, she does run rich. Let's see what happens, guys. Uh oh, uh oh, she's been sitting for a while. The battery might not last. Oh, we're so close. I don't know about this one, guys. I don't know about this one. Come on, booger. Fire up for me. Wah, 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 wah. All right, guys, we're gonna have to charge the battery a little bit here. I mean, we're probably just gonna end up buying a new battery today as well. And we probably should have lifted the bed before we did all that because, well, we need the battery to lift the bed. Let me get in here and pull my pins that lock the bed in. Try to not touch that big positive cable there. Pull up pin number two. Now, if you haven't been following along, the reason I put these pins in is because we have basically attached our gooseneck hitch here to the actual dump bed portion of the bed, which would mean all of the tension when you're towing with this thing would be on the two hinged bolts that are on the back here that allow the bed to pivot. So instead of putting all the tension and pressure on those and allowing the bed to do some weird movement and uh, you know end up getting bent or tweaked or anything like that, I put those pins in the front there, that way everything's locked solid on four corners and we can actually tow with this thing. So far it has worked great. Let's see if we have enough battery to lift the bed. Oh, okay, well. The new pump has been such an improvement on this. Okay, well, I kind of forgot the gooseneck ball was loose in there. Now you can see here, this is where Sergio already pre-wired because our plan was to make the connection right here. Again, I don't really want to do that, but it shouldn't be too hard to just backtrack this back to down there. We do need to get ourselves to the spark plugs, which I'm assuming we pull the seat out right here. We should be somewhere in that world. What we got here? Okay, we should probably take a picture of this so we don't mess this up. For the Jai Bao engine, genuine Jai Bao. Well, I've gone ahead and gotten one spark plug loosened up here. So let's pull this booger out and see what we're working with. That way we can go buy some freshies. Come on out. 
Oh yeah, she is caked on. All right, we got us some genuine NGK R. See that? That's R for Rhino slash R for racing slash R for really cool. And then if we're gonna be going to AutoZone, we might as well pick us up a battery here. So I'm gonna pull this battery out so we don't have to return our core later. We'll get these battery leads taken off here. You stay there. Loose enough. Yep. And we just gotta pry her up a little bit here. Come on, there we go. Oh. All right, so we've got us a battery. Oh, really? The handle's not gonna come out. Oh, she is crusty. Yeah, let's get stuff in there. To the auto parts store we go. Now, I'm just curious, out of all you guys out there, I know there's a big Home Depot and Lowe's preference. I'm a Home Depot guy. Some people are Lowe's people. It's gotta be the same in the automotive world, right? Is there an AutoZone and a Pet Boys people? Like, to me, I prefer Pet Boys. I feel like it's more of a storefront, whereas AutoZones usually feel like more of a walk-in and like you have to kind of talk to somebody at the counter. So I'm curious, comment down below. Are you guys AutoZone people or Pet Boys people? I know there's gonna be somebody who's gonna be like, I'm an O'Reilly's guy. Well, we're talking about AutoZone or Pet Boys. Take your pick. I guess we should throw O'Reilly's in there. Okay, let me know between the three. So I ended up going to AutoZone just because they were the closest and well, they didn't have the right size battery. So. We're gonna see if this will fit. I don't remember how much room we had in the battery tray with this old Group 5875. Apparently that's not one of the more common sizes. So they said I could try this other one and if I bring it back with no damage, they'll let me return it. Here's to hoping for no damage, but we're gonna find out pretty much immediately here as we walk in if this is gonna fit or not. Here we come for the moment of truth. Will she fit in the tray? Oh, guys, it is so close. If it didn't have these stupid little tabs back there, this would fit. I could probably cut those off. We're gonna set that right there and uh, we're gonna think about this for a second. We might be able to make that work. Okay, guys, well, I have decided these aren't doing anything for strength on this battery tray here. I mean, this thing's pretty solid without these stupid little things in here. So I'm gonna grind these little tacks off there. Those ones are gonna be a pain in the butt to get to. Hopefully we can just break that side off. And uh, let's just end up running a larger battery, you know? I feel like a more common size battery will benefit us at some point in the future with this thing anyway. So let's convert her to a more common size. And by convert, I mean using force. And I don't know where my cutoff discs are, so uh, this is gonna take a minute. Hopefully these break off easily. I'm not holding my breath here. Come on, welds. There's one weld. There's two welds. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Looks like this is gonna break off. Oh, ho, ho. finally, finally something to go into plan here. Now I just jinxed it. Come on, booger. There we go. All right, let's see now if our new battery fits. Oh, I like a glove. Will this thing hold it? This battery's a little taller. Oof, all right, that might be our next issue here, but that's okay. I feel like this is an issue we can work through. Let me just loosen her up a little bit. All right, all right, all right. That's looking like it's gonna work, guys. Boom, boom. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. We gotta put the handle down. The handle might be a problem. Does the handle come off? Okay, handle's gonna be a problem. We'll get the handle off later. Only because uh, Sergio put this breaker right here and basically what this allows me to do is completely cut off all of the accessory power running to the switch panel that's in there because that switch panel has a tiny phantom draw. Clearly you see I've left it on for like, I don't know, a couple of weeks now and Ran the battery down just a hair, not a lot, but it's also an old battery. But just in case this thing's gonna be parked for a while, we've got this breaker here, um, and then we can just reset it like that, and that kills all power. Okay, let's get this booger attached. We are all hooked up here again. We still gotta remove this handle, but we'll worry about that later. The bed will still go down with the handle sitting right there. Maybe we just, or maybe we just leave that handle. It kind of protects you from hitting the positive terminal there when you're pulling that pin out. Let's see if it works though. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
Oh jeez! Oh jeez! Kind of, kind of jacked up that license plate a little bit there. Forgot there was a hitch on this thing. One successful job done to get this thing ready for the ranch. And now for the complicated one. We gotta get the spark plugs in. I don't have a spark plug gapping tool, nor would I even really know what I'm doing there. So we're just gonna put them in as, as is. All right, let's see here about my calculations. That looks like there is gapped perfectly. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and put these in. Now because I am smarter than myself sometimes, I'm only doing one at a time. That way we don't mix up the wiring and get the firing order all out of whack. Cause I don't know where you find a manual for a Jai Bao engine. Not that that would really do me any good at all anyway. And just like that, we've got four spark plugs replaced here. So, moment of truth. Let's go to fire this thing up and hopefully she runs good and we did nothing wrong, but I don't know. Today you've only got one idiot of two idiots garage, so anything could happen when Chris is not supervising. Let's turn her over. Hopefully nothing comes flying out the side of the engine here. Oh my goodness gracious. That was like a quarter of a turn on the starter and this thing just fired right up. She probably just been needing this the whole time. Poor old girl, them plugs are so dang foul. I'm excited to take her for a test drive. Let's put the bed down here and see if she clears with the battery. I think we're good though. All right, let's see what this old girl does now. She'll probably go like 75 miles an hour if it didn't have a governor on it. Oh my, she sounds good. She's not smoking at all. Squeeze her back out of the shop here. I don't know what I just ran over, but I just ran over something. Oh, there's no like weird delay where you gotta like rev it up before you let the clutch out because there's like a bog in it. Dude, this thing runs so smooth now. Sorry for the weird GoPro angle, but we're just gonna have to live with that for right now. Okay, maybe that GoPro angle's not gonna work. GoPro angle fail right now. We are in second gear. Let's open her up a little bit. Dude, this thing runs so smooth. Imagine like all of a sudden the governor's just gone. That would make my day. Second, third. Cruising. Oh, no. And we cut off at like 27 miles an hour there. <laughs> Imagine how much this thing's gonna be able to tow now though. I mean, shoot, we were towing a couple thousand pounds with some bogged down spark plugs. We'd probably tow like 10,000 now, at least. Okay, so I've gone ahead and shut her off here. Let's see how she fires up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> This is all she needed the whole time. And we probably still could be rocking the old battery. You know, we probably wouldn't have fried it if this thing would fire up quickly. Try the old dump bed. Oh, this thing's gonna be so, so useful at the ranch. Now for my next trick, we need to get this glass window back in and getting the glass one is gonna be a lot harder than getting the plexiglass one in. Cause plexiglass one I can kind of bend to like finagle inside of this door here. The glass don't exactly work like that. We're gonna do our best though. Oh, almost dropped that. Okay, that could have been bad. All right, focus, don't film. This was definitely something I should have done when I was doing the other side because I remembered how it all came apart. Now, I gotta do some thinking here to remember what bolts go where because I didn't pull this side off. Zach did and I wasn't really paying attention when he did. I don't know where that goes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. Yeah, that's definitely a, that's definitely a one of those right there. Let's go that way. Probably goes that way. That makes sense. Now, do we have all the screws? That's gonna be a bigger problem. Well, here goes nothing. You on the inside or the outside? Why are you already fighting me? There we go. Okay, okay, okay. Things aren't looking that bad, guys. Things aren't looking that bad. Uh, you, I believe, come down, get in that track. And assuming I had the right screws, this would go on. I've got one. There's been so many people in and out of this thing, though, that that other one probably came, has been kicked out. Well, I lucked out, guys. I was able to find a bolt that fit. And so we have a fully functioning window here on the passenger side. Now we gotta go find the door panels, get all that put back together, and we can check one more thing off the list for today. Chris, we found out today, we only really need one idiot of two idiots garage. So I can quit? Yeah. Thank God. Oh. Darn, I changed the spark plugs on my own, man. Check this out, dude, check this out, dude, check this out. She purr like a kitten, man. What do you think, buddy? Dirty. 
Yep, yep, you're only three hours late to tell me that, you know, I already figured that out. Hey, look at that, no smoke. <laughs> now that our interior is pretty much put all back together, let's jump on our creeper here, get up underneath to mount this trailer plug. Um, I wasn't sure how this went in. I thought we we're gonna have to make a bracket, but they give you this really super sweet, super simple bracket to use. So this should be pretty easy. I'm thinking we're just gonna end up going somewhere about, about right there. Now the only issue is being able to get the nuts onto the backside of this, which is obviously not gonna happen being this far into this tubing. So I wish I had the right tap and die set to drill and tap a couple of bolts into here, but I don't really know what we're gonna do right now. And here is my hokey solution. So I'm gonna take these self-tapping screws that I used for the decking here on the trailer. I'm gonna pre-drill with a bit, just a hair smaller. We're gonna drive these in, which will cut the threads, and then I'm gonna end up cutting these shorter, and then basically use these as my tap and as my bolt. And then we'll probably put a little uh, lock washer on there as well, just to, you know, so nothing vibrates out. It is not ideal, but that's what we got in the shop, and I'm gonna make it work. We're just going to do a little trim on these bolts here. Well, screws. Okay, let's see if my evil plan has come together and if this is actually gonna work. Probably could have just waited until uh, this thing went over to Sergio's to finalize the wiring, but I like to keep moving. Oh, so far, looking good. Freaking solid. Now, all we gotta do is tighten down the actual plug portion here into its bracket. And we've got one more thing there checked off our list, other than Sergio still needing to hook up the wires in the back. We are making great progress today, guys. Sergio, this is like the ideal timing. What? Oh, now you're hurt. You're just putting that on. Yeah. So you're faking it right now for the video. <laughs> Jeez, guy. I got us ready. And then are you ready for me to bring this over to your shop? You want to pull that tow truck out that I saw go in there a minute ago? We'll, we'll get this thing wired up. I thought it was last week. You never showed up. No, you never showed up. Well, it was supposed to be two weeks ago. That, that was two weeks ago. Okay. I canceled two weeks ago and then you canceled it. Like, I didn't cancel. That. Well, you never talked. We never rescheduled. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all, um, Sergio's not going to get to wiring the mini truck and trailer today. I mean, it's kind of the end of the day anyway. And he's got a project in there. He's working on a tow truck. And I actually got to help him out now and make some uh, standoffs for a light bar that goes on. We're going to pull off the mini truck project. And we're going to build Sergio a couple of brackets here. That way he can keep working over on his side of things. And then we'll get the mini truck and trailer over to him to wire up. Uh, or we'll finish wiring up the lighting. So basically what we're building, guys, uh, for Sergio is the tow truck that he's working on. Basically has a headache rack like so, but imagine this top piece isn't there. Just this bottom bar right here. So the bottom, so the top of the headache rack's below the top of the cab, and that's where their light bar sits. Well, you can only see the light bar from the rear of the truck, not the front. So they want to build some standoffs to basically mount the light bar higher and above the cab. So their headache rack is five and a half inches. So we've got these five and a half inch bottom plates here. That's going to bolt directly to the headache rack. We're going to weld on this piece of two by four steel here at 16 inches. And then we will weld on a top plate, and this is the plate that the light bar is going to sit on. There will be obviously two of these that span the width of the headache rack. Uh, Sergio's going to do all the drilling because it's got to kind of correspond with the light bar and however he wants to put his bolts in. So we're just making these up for him real quick tonight. That way, uh, first thing in the morning, he can jump on his tow truck. Now, I know I talk about it a lot of my videos, but man, do I love this band saw. It makes cutting this 3 16 steel plate super easy versus trying to get out here with a cutoff disc. I'm not well versed in a plasma nor do we have a plasma anymore we ended up selling the plasma table and that plasma never really worked right for us anyway i don't know if it was the plasma if it was the compressor or what but for some reason that thing never cooperated so for a dumb dumb like me that needs to like bridge the gap between the smartest tool and the dumbest tool the bandsaw right here that's definitely it and this blade is super worn out but man does she still cut
story of my life, guys. <laughs> this is why I hate doing things in the evenings, but it's the only time I get a chance to do things. So, things are going great. We got, oh, that's a little, a little warmer than she looked there. Uh, first one all welded up right there for Sergio. And uh, got the second one all tacked up, was ready to go finish weld her real quick. And well, we ran out of welding wire. <laughs> and of course, it's after hours, so we can't just go get some right now. So unfortunately for Sergio, he's gonna have to wait till tomorrow afternoon when I can get back over here because we're gonna be working at the ranch in the morning, getting the driveway project back up underway. <sighs> that sucks. I was really hoping to have these done for Sergio tonight. And being that it is now night, I don't know that I ever showed off the lighting on the mini truck here. I don't think I've ever showed it since it's been wired up. But let's uh, turn the lights off in the old warehouse here. Actually, let's just pull it outside. Let's see if she's still a reliable starter here. Oh, jeez, like butter. We're gonna pull her out. I mean, obviously it's not, you know, as dark as it's gonna be at the ranch out here at the warehouse at night. We'll go over here where it's a little bit darker. We'll give you a little light here so you can see. So this is our switch panel. Um, I think, yeah, I don't think E and F are used. So we still have E and F as extras. We've got A, which is front lights. B, I believe, is rear. And then C and D are the left and right. Let's hit A. A is the light bar going across the front, which that is awesome. Plenty of light there. Um, let's see if we turn the headlights on if those do anything at this point. Well, they still do a little bit. A little wider off to the sides there. Okay, I was wrong. So B is the left side. There's B. C is the right side which means, last but not least, D is the backlights right there. Now let's see what they look like from the outside. These work lights are actually gonna be a huge help. You can see they're kind of pointed down towards the bed. And then obviously if you're reversing or anything like that, you can just kick them on if you need more light behind you, but I think they're gonna throw plenty of light off to the back there. These side lights are cool. I'm glad I added those because it's hard to see off to your sides out at the ranch. And even though you can see directly in front of you, you never know what's off to either side of you, a tree, a branch, a bush, a chupacabra. I wish the front light bar was a little bit brighter, but for what we're using it for. I highly doubt I'm gonna go really mobbing this thing out at the ranch at night very often. This is just in case we're out like working on something and it gets dark and we need to get back or we need a little bit of light to continue working um, until we finish. Super, super stoked with how this thing turned out. I mean, we could probably upgrade the headlights here to LEDs. That might, might help a little bit, but I think they look freaking killer. I mean, I guess we should probably pull the hanging plastic off. This will make you guys happy right here. Oh, but you probably can't even see it because the light. There we go, look at that. So with that guys, we're gonna wrap up. We are one step closer to the mini truck being out at the ranch. I'm pretty sure that thing's done other than the trailer wiring. And hopefully by tomorrow, Sergio can get that wired up and then get started on and hopefully finish the trailer wiring there. And then this whole setup is going out to the ranch and I'm so excited to have it out there. It's been very long awaited and much overdue. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did not subscribe already, please give the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, get a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workforwardapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best, I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah.